we're finishing our deep dive into verification and validation. And this is more than we wrote about in the book, but I really wanted to give you a sense if you are gonna use modeling and simulation in your biomechanics research, how we go about doing that. And the next step is to make real world predictions. And I say this because in a simulation, you predict something and you wanna see if it actually comes true in the real world. And this is a critical step. If, if you can make those predictions and then they, they bear out in the real world, that's a great test that your simulation is not only accurate, but valuable. This is an area where we've been trying to make predictions for a number of years, and it's finally coming to where we can use biomechanical simulations, muscle-driven simulations, to predict the outcome of surgeries for patients with cerebral palsy. And I'm not talking about exactly predicting their gait, but just saying whether they're with the set of surgeries they're going to have, will they have a good outcome or not? So what we did here was a biomechanics-based statistical model to predict a subject's expected outcome. And what I'm showing here is in green, the true positives, and in the red down here, the true negatives. So the true positives and true negatives say that this is an improvement in crouch gait actually measured versus predicted. So we got about 75% right. That was better than we do clinically. It's better than we do just um, using our intuition about making surgical decisions. So this kind of biomechanics-based statistical model is a prediction that uh, really did hold true. Not perfectly true, but it's still a valuable tool. So making predictions in the real world is a key step. Now, a final step here is I highlighted this at the outset, but I'll bring it back here, and that's to share your work to enable others to reproduce your work. It's extra work. If you do a study, you can publish a paper, great, but if no one can reproduce it, it really is much less valuable. So we encourage everybody in my lab and everybody around the world to not only publish your paper as a result of muscle-driven simulations, but also make your model available, make your software available, make your data available so that the next person who wants to study that problem can build on your results. Now I'll close with just a few challenges for the field in terms of validation. One is we need more gold standard data sets. By that I mean a really good experimental data set where we know the answers and we can use a simulation to make predictions. So that enables us to test our simulations with a data set. If we are another individual in another lab wants to do the same thing, we can compare our results. The other is to share models and simulations so that others can reproduce your results. When I first started in this field, you couldn't reproduce anyone's simulation results. The code wasn't available, the model wasn't available, and we've been working for really decades to try to change that so that you can use OpenSim, you can exchange models, just like you do a Word file. Somebody gives you a model of the elbow, you can load it into your software, manipulate, and reproduce their results. The other thing is validation is time consuming. So tools that automate this could be really valuable. It's, there's very few that do that and it's an important next step. The other is to learn what's inside the black box. I emphasized this before, know the tools, make sure that you understand their strengths and limitations. And once you do, teach others how to open that box and see what's inside. And finally, a big challenge for our field is to hit home runs. By that, I mean big results that make a difference where people see predicting the future with a biomechanical simulation can be really valuable. Past home runs in biomechanics have been things like total joint replacements, where people with osteoarthritis now can get a total joint replacement and have a much improved life. We need more of that kind of home run in biomechanical simulation. Predicting the outcome of surgery is certainly one of them. So I went much deeper here than we did in the book, but hopefully that's valuable to you as you build muscle gym simulations and learn how they work. I wanna close by thanking the other contributors to 
this lecture, Jen Hicks, AJ Seth, Mike Sherman, Apoorva, Edith, Tom, Sam, and Tim Dorn, and point you to this paper that Jen Hicks authored that gives you even more detail than I covered in this lecture. So next, we're moving on to how we uh, developed OpenSim and how to use that to generate muscle-driven simulations.